Joining me today is Ryan Stock, the founder of MindSport, the number one meditation app for athletes. He was a former college basketball player and coach, but later transitioned to learning the foundations of yoga and meditation to deal with his own inner struggles. We discuss his journey to the mindfulness space, how meditation can assist athletic performance, and much more. Thanks for tuning in, and I hope you guys enjoy. Hello and welcome to the Flow Station Podcast. I'm your host, Will Ferris, and as always, the goal is to help you cultivate your unique flow by bringing on guests who have tapped into theirs. Joining me today is the uh, founder of MindSport app. I know you guys have heard of it, uh, Ryan Stock. Really appreciate you coming on, man. Thanks for having me. I'm excited. Yeah. So Ryan is, you know, he's had quite the journey to get to where he is, the mindfulness space today. If you could just give a quick background uh, of your journey from being a player, a coach, and really seeing how that path was an internal struggle. Yeah, I appreciate the question. Good question. And um, for me, as you mentioned, I was an NCAA athlete for um, for four years, played Division two basketball, and then um, coached for 12, uh, essentially six JUCO, and then six at the, at the Division two level again. Um, and, and everywhere I went, and I, I don't say this braggingly, but everywhere I went, I was having – a ton of success, um, but still feeling really unsatisfied, really anxious, really frustrated, really stressed. So, as a player, I had you know a bunch of individual records at the university I attended, and then um, record-setting success at all the, the schools I coached at. Um, but yeah, still having all these emotions, these negative emotions, and, and this feeling of unsatisfaction um, that essentially all came to head on my on my 34th birthday and I think you and I have talked about this before but um, for your listeners it was my 34th birthday we won the game I was coaching that day by by double digits against a tough conference opponent and then I found out um, with my wife at the time um, that her and I were were having our first child my only child and um, and still after it being my birthday after winning the game I'm coaching by double digits and finding out I'm having my first child um, I was sitting there drinking by myself in the kitchen, just like frustrated as hell, and um, and again, as I mentioned, unsatisfied, and not really sure why. Um, and so I knew that in order for me to to live the way I needed to live, health wise, um, and be in a good space mentally, and then more importantly, it, it really shifted finding out I was going to be a dad because I knew that in order to be the dad I wanted to be, um, that something had to change. So uh, I went in and resigned the next day and uh, affected at the end of the season obviously but I told him I was I was done coaching there and had no idea what I wanted to do um so I I started some leadership training uh some executive coaching of of professional and college athletes I got into disc behavior assessments which is just understanding our behaviors our motivators how to communicate more effectively um and, and all that was helping, but I still hadn't found it yet. And then I, I got into, a couple of years ago, into mindfulness and meditation. Um, and that was really where it shifted for me. And, and I knew that what I had been doing was, was close to what I needed to do. Um, but the, the mindfulness, meditation, and even the yoga piece was really the, the last piece of the puzzle. So that led me to, to start the athlete meditation app um, that you mentioned, MindSport, um, where we help athletes and coaches improve performance mentally and physically through through guided movement meditations um and that launched march of 2018 so it's been a little over a year almost a year and a half and um we're now in like 60 countries across the world and have 17,000 users i think i checked yesterday um so yeah it was uh, a long strange trip for sure yeah. um but i'm in a, a much better space mentally and, and even physically now um, than when I was coaching and probably at any point in my life, to be quite honest. Yeah, man. So, I mean, that's a great story. I appreciate the openness. With the meditation and mindfulness piece, I don't know if that's as, as well taught here in America. A lot of it could be performance-based. So for you, like, what was the, the process when you finally started to get into meditation? How were you able to shift from, like, oh, this is something I need to improve, I need to get better at, and, and kind of embody that non-judgmental state. Uh, right. Yeah. So it was an interesting way that you even phrased that question because one of the big shifts for me um, was like there's always areas of our lives that we need to improve or that we'd like um, 
to do differently or do better. Um, but a big part of why I was drawn to meditation mindfulness is the non-judgmental part of it, like you mentioned. Um, so while there may be days where you have like a good session, um, you know, where you sit for 15, 30 minutes and, and your mind doesn't wander, or you don't you know, have all these thoughts enter and leave your mind, uh, monkey mind as it's called, um, or there's days where you sit for five minutes and your mind's jumping all over the place and you're like, man, that sucked. Um, but but the big the big shift for me in all of that was similar to what we really struggle with as athletes is getting away from like mm-hmm. success or I'm a failure and just letting everything be what it is. Um, so there's going to be days or sessions where I'm sitting and meditating um, where I feel like you know it went great. And there's going to be other days where it was shorter or not as successful as, as a lot of people would call them. Um, but I learned to just label them for what they are, you know, say my mind was wandering or thinking about work or thinking about my son, um, and then let them go. And instead of attaching to those feelings, those emotions, negative or positive, uh, again, that we do in life and especially as athletes, um, I've learned to label them for what they are, uh, again, like success, failure, wandering work, um, relationships and then you just move on from them and you return to the breath and return to that present moment and, it, and and life in in your athletic career or whatever it may be it becomes a lot more enjoyable when you're able to do that instead of worrying about the past or or thinking about the future and what could go wrong uh, which we do so often as athletes um, instead mindfulness and meditation helps you to really remain present and when you're able to do that it, it improves your performance in just about every area of your life so i started meditation you know, going pretty heavy at it last year. And, and I didn't know all the time that like, hey, how is this going to translate onto the floor or in my day-to-day life? What is that balance to you see a negative thought, you're not taken out by it, but yeah. you are in performance mode where you need to perform. Like, how do you see that practice translating onto the floor once you do have that foundation of non-judgment and, and letting things be? Yeah, so I'll give you a, a few different pieces. Um, so first, one called called the sacred pause that we have a session on within our app, right? Um, so reacting versus responding is what the sacred pause is. So think about like basketball, especially. You're you're driving down the floor, um, your handle gets a little loose, you turn the ball over, you're frustrated, you snap, you reach, you foul the guy. That's a reaction, right? You don't think about it at all. You just react to a negative play, which turns into two negatives. Now it's your third foul in the first half, and you got to sit out the rest of the first half, right? So that's reacting versus responding. And this is a piece of, of meditation. So instead of, of snap fouling the guy, now you're in foul trouble, you got to sit out for the rest of the first half. You turn that ball over, and in that split second, right, instead of reacting to the play, you just take that one breath, and you thoughtfully respond to the situation. That play's over with. You can't do anything about it. The turnover happened. Instead, you sprint back. You know, you pick up the ball. You stop the ball. The defense floods in behind you. You guys get a stop. And now that play's over with. Um, mm-hmm. You didn't okay. pick up your third foul. Um, you're still in a good space mentally. And what could have been just one negative play doesn't turn into two to three to four because instead of reacting, um, you've used your practice to thoughtfully respond to the situation. And so, um, you know, you the rest of the half plays out well. You're not in foul trouble for the second half. And that's just one example of one play of how our mind can start to work with the meditation piece. Um, you know, scientifically, it's been proven that you're able to, like, remember sets and plays um, for longer amounts of time more accurately. They did a study in Europe. Um, over It was a different sport. But the reaction of their athletes was not only quicker, it was actually more accurate as well. Um, so, obviously, that's going to help you in, in any sport. Um, but I was just watching a show. I think it was on Netflix. Um, I found this interesting. So, it was about um, the mind, essentially, and... And they study all these like bright flight, like the smartest people in the world. And this girl could remember variations of three numbers. And she had this elaborate system of how she did it. And they asked her what she found with all these, you know, smartest people in the world, Mensa type people, um, what the most common thread was that she found in all her conversations. And she said just about everybody meditating um, that was like the brightest people in the entire world. Now, I don't have any science or studies to, <laughs> to validate that. Um, but but I do know that the memory part, the reaction time part, the science behind it's it's been proven. Um, you know, especially in in hard hitting sports like football and some of those, 
where it's actually been proven to repair, um, you know, head trauma and brain stuff. So, yeah, I mean, the the actual carryover aside from just feeling better and feeling more chill um, mm-hmm. is there's actually a, a ton of science starting to come out now of how it can can improve you. That's why within our app we talk a lot about how it improves you not only mentally but but physically as well. Yeah, and so as you were speaking, I think one of the biggest shifts that have occurred for me in meditation over the last probably month or so is to not look at it as another task that you have to do, like something that's almost compulsive, like, oh, I got to do this in order. Or when I'm in the meditation, I got to follow my breath. I got to, you know, let things go. What, what is that balance for you, maybe when you practice or when you teach, to teach people that a hey, meditation or mindfulness is not another thing you have to you know, worry about or, or try to attain something in there, but there is a level of being where it, it's like, it's okay. You, you don't always have to be doing something every moment of the day. And how right. does that, you know, assist people to chill out more when they're in their practice? <laughs> yeah, that was, a, that was a challenge for me early on. Um, and I think that's a natural challenge for athletes as they transition either out of sport um, or even start to pick up on meditation while they're still playing. Um, it's just because we're so competitive, we want to be the best at everything. Um, and so when I first started, I was like, man, I'm getting up at 5.30 a.m., 6 a.m., and I'm, I'm meditating at 30 minutes every day. And, um, and yeah, that's the opposite of, of what you want to do. Discipline's good in, yeah. in any aspect yeah. of your lives, um, but it also can't control you, um, like what you were alluding to. It can't be that you're so worried about um, practicing every day that you lose what the practice is meant for. Um, or you start to judge yourself so much that again, that's what you're trying to get away from in both athletics and then mentally with, with meditation is, is to lose a lot of that judgment. Um, so I had to be really careful of that early on. And I'd, I'd also um, probably recommend to your audience too to, to watch that and, and almost guard against that. That's why I'm not big on like some of those meditation apps. And ours, ours has a tracker too. We have a calendar on your profile. But a lot of those meditation apps that talk about streaks or some of those people that brag about how they've meditated for you know 300 straight days and like we'll screenshot the app um that's great again i'm not knocking discipline um it's it's important in certain aspects of our lives uh but also i'd 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 be hesitant to get so worried about it so controlled by it um that you start to then fall back into that cycle that that essentially we're trying to help athletes guard against which is being so judgmental of I didn't meditate long enough today or it wasn't good today or whatever. Yeah. Um, so if you can do it and it feels good and it feels right, then yeah, meditate every day for whatever feels right for you. But also if if days are, are crazy or you just got a bunch of stuff going on in your life and you can only meditate for five minutes that day or 10 minutes that day instead of, you know, 30 like you wanted to, then that's okay too. Um, mm-hmm. You know, that's a different form of, of what you alluded to earlier and that that's just essentially practicing self-love and and not being judgmental of you trying to do the best you can with the time you've got that day um making it a part of your practice a part of your self-love but also you know not bashing yourself not not being judgmental of yourself if you don't get what you were trying to in one particular day yeah that's a a great answer man obviously you're not coaching anymore but you're working with college teams and, and other you know players and athletes how receptive have the programs been that you've worked with in terms of implementing some of what you've taught? And let's say if you were to go back to be a coach now, how would you implement a mindfulness, you know, maybe in practice or after practice? Or That's a good question. I've thought about the second part of the question at time. Um, you know, from like having our team meditate like pre and post game um, to a bunch of different ways. I've integrated like practice plans and all that. And um, I think the answer like, like any answer or any good coach is, is going to be, it would, it would probably vary. Um, I wouldn't force it on anybody. I would, I would certainly recommend it. And I know, um, you know, the best teams in the NBA, especially are, are already starting to integrate this stuff. And the NBA has a partnership with Headspace. Um, you know, the, the Bulls have been doing it in the late nineties with Jordan and Phil Jackson and, and all of them. And then it's carried over to when he, when Phil had Kobe and Shaq, they did it some to even Golden State, obviously Kurza a disciple of Phil and, and they are big on meditation. And, and as you mentioned, some guys like Kevin Love and, and others are starting to come out um, that are really struggling with anxiety, stress, or other things like that to where meditation has become uh, a big part of their practice. So um, I would, I would certainly recommend it and integrate it. Um, I wouldn't force it on anybody, but um, the, the biggest thing that I would 
um, make sure we had a good read on, a good pulse on with any team that I coached nowadays would just be overall mental well-being, overall mental health. I, I think meditation is an integral part of that. Um, but to me, that's the biggest piece of it is is being open to having those conversations. Um, you know, that's why, like, when we started, I'm, I'm real big on being vulnerable and, and being raw and being authentic. I think that opens the door so that others are comfortable doing the same thing. Um, so I'd certainly um, have that be the space that, that I essentially um, – led my team with nowadays is, is just being open, being honest, being raw, making sure everyone knows they can talk about uh, not only the positives, but the negatives in their lives. Um, and then, yeah, using things like meditation and yoga um, you know, to, to make us perform at a higher level. That was one of the interesting, so I, I finished up my 200 hour yoga teacher training um, this summer too. And that was one of the funniest experiences of of my life, man. I, I did yoga for the first time a little over two years ago, I think. And, um, and I was honestly, I was pissed off when I left because I was like, man, why haven't I been doing this for the last 20 years? Um, because it's just, you move your body in such different ways and we become so rigid in our movements and our sports specific stuff, especially with specialization these days that, I um, mean, yoga is like a, a beautiful practice to, um, again, just connect your mind and body in ways that you don't normally do. Um, with, with just the sports specific stuff that we tend to do um, so yeah that's the, the second part of the answer and, and you know in an answer to the first the, the ways that I worked with with from NBA guys and NBA teams down to to college teams and then you know some of the pro athletes I've worked with in other sports it, it's again just just essentially getting a pulse for where they're at um, what they're trying to accomplish with either their their mindfulness meditation practice or or yoga and um, and just aiding them and and i'm big on not trying to tell anybody what to do or tell anybody what i think they need to do it's more about helping them raise their self-awareness mm. their self-acceptance and then helping them with their mission to get there yeah man that's awesome and you know the main thing of this podcast is tapping into that flow and trying to you know assist people in finding that unique flow i think that kind of falls in line with what you just said is assisting yeah. everyone to find that self-awareness not necessarily you know, everyone's unique, so everyone's going to have their own tune in, their own way of, you know, tapping into that flow. Um, and so how would you define it for yourself, you know, when you're in that flow? And how do you see that med meditation mindfulness practice assisting that state? Yeah, um, you and I talked a little bit about this off air, but, but um, flow state's a common sports psychology term uh, that they use with, with a lot of athletes. And and the one that I use most often, this comes from the executive coaching that I did, is, is just our unconscious mind versus our conscious mind. Um, so the example I always use is, is like um, if I asked all your listeners right now to think of their cell phone number, everybody could do it, uh, but nobody was thinking about their cell phone before I told you to think about it, right? Well, that's because it's stored in your unconscious mind. It's why you can go 60 down the highway and all of a sudden you'll realize you haven't been thinking of anything for the last five minutes. You know, um, it's cause our mind and our bodies can function on, on autopilot or unconsciously like that. Um, well, so that unconscious mind, that flow state is, is essentially what we're always trying to accomplish as athletes. It's ironically why you hear, um, when someone's on fire, you know, like Steph clay, one of those cats or, or anybody from, you know, Kobe to Jordan to, to all the greats, that's why the announcers are always like, you know, he or she's playing out of their mind, he or she's unconscious, and, and it's because they are. Um, when you're at the highest level of performance in any sport, it's you're no longer thinking about anything. Um, now, for most people, that only happens maybe once a year, um, you know, three or four times in your life where you're just truly out of your mind. And I think we've all been there, you know, at some point in time where it's, you know, dropping 40 or 50 in a summer league game or something like that with a the bucket feels huge um, yeah. and you're you're literally not thinking you're just reacting um, and so what we're trying to do with our mindfulness and meditation practice is, is just um, get your mind and body more readily available to to enter those states to enter that flow state to perform unconsciously um, and so that everything can become reactionary and that you're not a robot having to be told to do something and then you know awkwardly moving to wherever you got to be it's instead fluid and flowing um and and quite literally not thinking because when you're in that state everything's going to be so much quicker so much more fluid and so much more effective 
Yeah, and as you're speaking, I think that's really what the biggest translation is for that meditation is, you know, in meditation, when you're trying to fight those waves, if there's something that is coming in your mind and you try to fight it, like it's going to stick around more or might grow more. But if you are in that meditation and you're letting things be and you're letting things pass, eventually it'll become clearer and clearer and clearer. So I feel like it's that it's that same way for hoops or same way for any other sport is like yeah. if you're trying to force something, yeah, you're not gonna you're not gonna feel in that unconscious mind. But if you trust that skill that you have built and developed, I feel like that could be a you know a really great way that meditation translates onto the court is that awareness of when I'm forcing something and when I'm not. And we've all I think we've all been there at like the beginning of seasons when you're learning a new defense or like a new set. Um, yeah. And again, this is a new sport. Um, but again, you can almost like physically see everybody moving so rigidly, or like trying to remember a play, so they're like really slow down you know um or even like football when you see a quarterback and a receiver you know there's a reason why those guys that have played together for three or four years you know you see like Mahomes and Brady and those guys now that throw passes five yards before dudes even turned around yeah. and it's just because they've ripped it so much um then no that's a great point um that yeah if you can if you can learn to train your mind through meditation and other practices to to not have to think or if those thoughts do into your mind that you can let them go and move on from them quicker. Um, yeah, you're going to be infinitely more effective because of that. Uh, if instead you're not attaching to those thoughts of negativity or failure or anxiety or stress, we all still have them. Those will never completely go away, but if they enter and you can move on from them quicker, then yeah, that's a great point, man. You can really raise your level of performance just off of that ability alone. When did you write Buddha was a baller and kind of what, what's the, uh, <laughs> You know, the summary on that book. Yeah. Um, so while I was developing this app, MindSport, um, I had all this content that I had done all this research to make the sessions powerful within the app. Uh, but I was like, man, I'm, I might as well do something with all this research and copy that I've written for all these for all these sessions. Um, and so that's when I was really into to mindfulness and, and meditation. Um, and, and scratching the surface and, and then diving deeper into the practice. Um, and what I, I started to think through all this research and data was, um, yeah, Buddha would have been the ultimate baller essentially not because of his body or anything physically, but because of his mind. Um, and so, yeah, that's how the book came about. I had all this content and copy that was very much aligned with athletics from the app. Um, but then I tied Buddha into uh, all the teachings. And then as you've seen from the images, man, we've got some really cool images of, of Buddha's body on yeah. like Jordan and uh, LeBron and Messi and all these really famous um, iconic uh, type shots where we've got Buddha superimposed in their, in their sports body. It's pretty cool. Yeah, no, it's awesome. I, I took a peek at the pictures. I was like, oh, that's an awesome book. Um, but now, you know, talk about the app a little bit more. Obviously, you've been sponsoring – the podcast what's going to be you know new on the app moving forward what does it assist athletes with uh, as it is yeah so we're, we're really excited we've got a, a pretty big update coming um october of 19 um where we're adding essentially 14 new sessions to our onboarding so when an athlete downloads it for the first time that's where they'll start um, so really excited about that. Again, that'll launch October of 19. And then the other big piece that we're really excited about is we're going to start adding sessions monthly from there on out. Um, and you and I, again, talked about this a little bit, but we're going to start to make our, our athlete meditation sessions sports specific. So if you're a basketball player, there's going to be a basketball series, soccer, soccer, football, football, volleyball. Um, and all those will start to drip out hopefully aligning with the season so like fall sports will be out in october november um winter sports will be out around december january and then spring will be out um, february march Uh, but again we'll start adding those monthly as well um so we're, we're really trying to like continue to narrow the scope um it's it's helpful right now for athletes because we're the only athlete meditation app every single session within our apps talks about on the court on the field um so we're already really niched in that regard um, but we're going to just continue to narrow the scope even more and even more to help whatever you are whatever your sport is um help you perform at the highest possible level that you can um but in answer to your question about the the actual content within it 
Yeah, but we've got everything from sessions on like visualization and motivation on the positive side side of things. Um, so helping you see your performance before it happens, um, understanding your why as an athlete, because that's different from everybody, um, to the negative side of things. So like dealing with anxiety and stress, dealing with failure, um, helping you sleep at night. That's a big one for athletes. Um, you know, quieting all those thoughts as you go to bed at the end of the night. Uh, we even got pre and post meditation sessions. So something you can listen to right as you walk in the gym or in the locker room, you know, before you head out on the field to, um, you know, something a lot of athletes don't think about is once practice or a game's over, especially if it's a challenging game, how do you come back down? Um, so we've got meditation sessions that help you chill back out and, um, kind of get that baseline back to where it should be you know after a tough practice or or competition so yeah we've got a session in there for everybody no matter what you're dealing with that day um so by the time this latest update goes up we'll have 70 75 sessions or so within the app so yeah pretty cool pretty powerful stuff love it man i always like to end each podcast with you know a challenge for the viewers so maybe something that you could offer to them something big or small that they can take with them for this next week or next month or next year to to work towards that you feel like you have uh you've either been working on yourself or that you feel like you've embodied well um a good question two two things probably jump out to me um so with with the mindfulness and meditation thing for athletes a lot of guys get scared off and girls uh, initially because they, and I, I joke about this, but they, they envision like either these, you know, like monks meditating up in the mountains or um, I always make the joke about martial art movies where it's like, you know, this extreme martial artist that's got his legs crossed and floating off the ground. And, <laughs> um, and that's not what it is. It's, it's finding those, those moments throughout the day. You know, maybe when you wake up in the morning or before you go to practice, after practice, before you go to sleep at night. Um, and, and most of our sessions are just two to three minutes, and I make them that way on purpose because I know athletes' lives are busy. Um, all of our lives are busy, but it's just finding two, three, and then as you get deeper into your practice, it may, it may expand into 10, 15, 30 minutes. Um, but don't be judgmental about that, that part of it. Um, understand that it's it's for everybody and anybody. It's simply, as you mentioned earlier, it's, it's simply just focusing on your breath, becoming more aware of your body, how your mind and body are connected. And if if for you success is only one minute a day, two minutes a day, um, then that's great, man. That's that's all you need. Start with that. Um, you know, start with the breath and, and quieting the mind for just a minute or two a day, um, and then expand it from there. But but don't be judgmental of it and, and try not to be scared off by some of the stereotypes that you um, that you hear that surround it because yeah, it's a, it's a great and powerful thing. And, and even if you're only doing it for a minute or two a day, that's a great place to start. And you'll see results you know, within just a couple of weeks. Um, so I'd, I'd say I'd encourage your listeners to, to start there. Um, and then, yeah, the other thing is it's, it's really tricky as athletes you know, the, and you mentioned the labeling part a couple of times, but one of the big messages I always preach to the athletes I work with is, you know, if you lose a game, that's not good enough. You immediately are, are frustrated, mad. You want to figure out how you could have won. If you win by two points, you're like, yeah, that's good enough, but we should have won by double digits. And if you win by double digits, you're like, well, yeah, we should have done that. So you immediately start thinking about the next game. And we're very rarely truly present in our in our performances because of that um you know we're always so judgmental and nothing's ever good enough and that's part of what i alluded to in kind of my revelatory moment where i, I knew something had to change which is um I mean, j just focus more on being present with your performance each day and um being the best version of yourself that you can be which will in turn make your your team the best version of a team that they can be um but yeah again try and be less judgmental and, and worrying about the past so much or, or thinking about the future and, and all the things um, that either have gone wrong or could go wrong. And instead take those moments, man, to to enjoy those you know, those people that are around you, the, the meal you have in front of you, the the shower that you're taking, you know, the workout that you're doing. Um, focus on the breath and, and be more present during those experiences and, and you start to make those little subtle mind shifts um 
and, and be more present, which which obviously mindfulness and meditation is a, a big part of, then you'll start to see some some pretty pretty big shifts in your overall levels of happiness, joy, and and most importantly for athletes in your in your performance. So, a couple yeah, couple longer pieces, a bit of a tangent there, but I think that's the big that's the big pieces of, of mindfulness and meditation I'd encourage you guys to to try out. Yeah, no, I love that, man. And, you know, for me, being an athlete, I really appreciate the work that you're doing, just trying to spread that message and focusing on athletes specifically, because I, on my journey, I've definitely seen a lot of people that have wanted this and needed it. And uh, now that, you know, guys like you are are making it more popular and and making it so it's more available, uh, definitely really appreciate that and wish I could have, you know, tapped in earlier. Definitely looking forward to, you know, seeing how the app grows. And uh, thank you for coming on the podcast and, and lightening some people towards some uh you know more mindfulness and meditation yeah i love seeing you young bucks do your thing out there man. Uh, <laughs> congratulations to you too keep yeah. killing it thank you man thank you guys for tuning into the flow station podcast be sure to follow us on instagram twitter facebook for shorter clips of these episodes you can also find us on itunes or spotify if you want the audio versions please be sure to share with your friends if you enjoyed it